This is what else is located at 3,100 meters and it's between the Cordillera Negra and Cordillera Blanca so there is just a narrow place which is located with us and the expansion is really crowded. Yeah, Joshua, you've been living here in Huaraz for your entire life. So I'm wondering, so this city, it's a very beautiful city, but it looks a little bit different from other South American cities. Yeah, basically around this area we had the earthquake on 1970 and it destroyed all the colonial buildings. So this city is uh, really new and as you see it's rebuilt it. Todo, todo, what I fe, todo con el terremoto caído las casas. Y bonito lo han reconstruido. Yeah, the importance of what has today is basically the tourism because a lot of people want to see this mountain it's a really different culture as well and everything is for share it's the Andean Cosmovision over here uh, you can see the people walking around the streets with the typical dresses and stuff and if you go far away from what else you can find uh, really good fields, potatoes and friendly people and yeah the mountains are gorgeous every day over here. The Cordillera Blanca is more than 6,000 meters high and contains most of the tropical glaciers worldwide. The vertical distance between the highest peaks and the Rio Santa Valley is more than 4,000 meters. You may have heard that the Cordillera Blanca is a so-called batholith. And what a batholith is, I want to show you briefly. Well, mainly you've got some existing rock where some magma is beneath. Since this is lighter, when it is liquid, it rises up and it intrudes the existing rock, which means it enters it and cools down without reaching the surface. Then the sedimentary rock slips off over thousands and millions of years and what does it do? And forms the Cordillera Negra. The batholith itself was exposed and now forms the Cordillera Blanca, 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 Blanca.